If you're an affectionate, a warm and a generous person with an open kind of expansive nature, um, you might be a fire type. If you're the life of the party kind of person, you like sensory, pleasurable things, um, you appreciate beauty perhaps, um, and you really like um, vibrancy and optimism, and you are generally a charismatic person. That means people are drawn to you, they're attracted to you. You might be a fire element type of person. Today on the channel, we're gonna talk about fire element and what happens when a fire element person is in a healthy state, what happens when they're in a deficient state, and what happens when they're in like an exaggerated, when there's just too much fire going on. Welcome to the Chinese Medicine Podcast. Today on this video, I'm gonna be talking about the fire type in the five element personality types. I'm Marie Hopkinson, I'm an acupuncturist and a herbalist, and we're gonna be continuing this series about the different kinds of personality types. So we're gonna be talking about the fire type of personality in Chinese medicine. Now, um, we're gonna be talking about what it is to be in your normal personality or in, in, um, in health, and then if there's just too much fire going on and you are a fire type, then what would be um, the symptoms or the, um, the conditions or things that you might suffer from easily in a physical sense, but also what might be the personality and, and the things that um, or the emotional stuff that might um, plague you or might be, a, be troublesome for you or might be um, just who you are <laughs> as a person. Um, and then if you're deficient, you're supposed to be a fire type, but you're in a deficient state, what would happen then? So um, this is a really interesting series. Um, I'm finding it very interesting to do this series and I'm also finding it really um, great to hear people's comments. So if you've got a comment to put in the comments below, pop it in there. I'll endeavor to answer your questions as I always do on the channel. Um, so what is a fire type like? They are a charismatic, warm type of person. So if you're into the Myers-Briggs personality types, they're more likely to be an E. Um, versus an I, so they're more likely to be extroverted versus an introverted person. Um, but they generally would be known as a warm um, and a friendly type of person. The previous types that we've just done can be very contrasting to this type, so like the wood and the um, water types typically aren't that type of charismatic as a fire type of person. Um, so uh, they can be known as an intuitive person and, and having that um, a connection and having relationships and valuing that and being good at, at doing that, good being good at forming relationships with other people. Um, now, just as a little side note, since I've been started this series, some people have asked me, Marie, are these um, personality types have any correlation to my zodiac type, like, um, or my year of birth type, my animal birth, and and that, and that kind of thing? Um, if there is any relationship there, um, correlation there is probably purely coincidental. Any relationship between like the zodiac signs and um, you, and your type of when we're talking about these five different personality types um, or constitutional types is probably a better way to put it as well um, is purely coincidental, right? It's, it's not related related to when you were born or um, what year of birth you had or something like that or the month of birth. Um, but it it can be difficult to kind of get the diagnosis. So um, how would you know? You could do a, do a personality test with a qualified um, five element acupuncturist. That's what they typically do. That's mostly what they would spend their first consultation doing. And sometimes the questionnaires that they give you can be quite um, detailed, quite, um, and the questions that they might ask you um, would be quite detailed. Um, there is a personality questionnaire test that I found um, from the Longevity Center. So I'll pop that link in the description below and you can jump on there and, and do that test for yourself. And then it'll give you a score about where you fit in terms of which um, elements you have the higher scores in. Now, it's normal for some people to be actually two types or um, almost split between two types, and you can kind of see um, where that fits in. Um, as a practitioner, you can kind of see how that makes sense. Um, but as a lay person, you might struggle with that, but it still can be useful to kind of know, okay, I'm mostly this one type. Um, and particularly if you score very low on the others and the other and two of them are fairly high or one's very high compared to the others, then that's the one you kind of go with. So let's get back to the fire type. The fire type is generally a lively person. Um, so they wouldn't shy away from social interactions. They wouldn't be one to stay at home at a party. They would like those kinds of things. They would like um, a social life. Um, the COVID thing right now might be <laughs> causing them great distress because um, those social interactions would be a really key part of who they are and how they express themselves and also how you experience um, love and you know there's these different things like the love languages and things like that um, can be part of this as well. 
um, they tend to be easily communicative, right? So think of fire as a um, as an actual thing, right? A fire um, in its normal form, it's quite soft, right? Fire can blaze really hard, and it can be powerful, but it's in its just its natural state, like just a flame of fire, is actually soft and flexible. And it's quite warm and it can be really pleasant, right? So there's nothing better, I think, on a really cold night to have, you know, someone start up a fire and you sort of, to be around that at the appropriate distance, let's say, for the size of the fire. But it's, it's heartwarming, right, to be around that fire and to experience that warmth. And that's what a fire person is like. It can be really nice to be around them because they're very warming. <laughs> and in Chinese medicine, your heart is represented by the fire element, or the fire element represents your heart. And so that heartwarming nature is something to think of. You know, they're people that um, just have that charisma and they have that ability to make people feel good about themselves by being around. You know, they enjoy being around others and others usually enjoy kind of being around them. Um, they tend to be like a sanguine nature and an optimistic kind of person, um, so, you know, a happy person in its true nature. Um, the, the fire type is a happy, you know, a generally a happy person. Um, and they can be very loving and tender um, and caring, you know, um, and that kind of a nature of person. Now, we can talk about the detriments of this or the um, the downside of this, because every 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 <laughs> every every good thing has a downside in a way if it's left to its own devices or it's untempered by other aspects fire types of people tend to be quite aware right they're aware of other people's uh, that they can read the feeling in a room very easily they're not all caught up in their own selves they're aware of the, the surroundings they're aware of how people are feeling or how they're being perceived or um, they kind of have that that strong awareness and they tend to be an alert person um, and enthusiastic Right now, the other aspect of your fire element in Chinese medicine, which relates to your heart, is your shen, and that's your mental emotional functions. So it's fair enough to say that these people would be kind of in touch with their mental emotional functions or just their emotions, probably the most out of all of the um, different kinds of elements, right? They'd be more inclined to be aware of the feelings that they have and not be someone that's um, hiding their feelings. Like they know that they feel sad, they know they feel happy, they know, um, you know, that uh, like they're a, a, they don't shy away from ha wanting to express those or to, um, you know, to be able to articulate what those, those things are. So they tend to leave a good impression on people or leave an impression. They tend to be communicative and lively um, and, you know, a soft person, um, you know, and possibly even that vulnerability can be there as part of that. Um, that ability to be in touch with your emotions means you, you need to be kind of vulnerable in some way. Um, so in a relationship, these people would be generally good in a relationship, right, because they like other people. <laughs> Um, they like that. Um, they like that social interaction, but they're also probably good at showing affection and um, wa and re wanting to receive aff affection and things like that back at them. Um, so, what happens when a fire element type of person is in um, a state of not a uh, not a healthy state, right? So, um, in an exaggerated sense, so there's too much fire. So what happens when there's too much fire, right, going on for the good of the person? Um, so, instead of being lively. Um, they could be really excitable. Now, something to think about in Chinese medicine when we think of element, the elements and the emotions. You can easily see how some most emotions can be detrimental in excess, but the emotion associated with the heart and with fire, which is joy, is hard to kind of imagine. Well, could you have too much joy? What's the, what, why wouldn't you want <laughs> exuberant joy or um, in, <laughs> like an insurmountable amount of joy? Well, that can sometimes be like either inappropriate joy, so a person that is just full of... Um, happiness and can't experience other emotions. So a person that kind of laughs inappropriately, and this could be in a mental um, illness, a person can be like that, where they, they might be at a funeral, let's say, and they just, they, they want to cry, but they can laugh, they only are laughing, right? Um, or a grief situation has happened, they're overcome with um, laughter when they should be crying. That's a very extreme example, but you kind of get the picture of sometimes people um, can be so excitable and um, they just um, yeah unable to take things seriously in life. Um, that might be part of this in a, in a um, an exaggerated sense. Um, so also something that can happen um, is people can become like grandiose and um, like a bit too sexual in this way. Um, so in a state of health, a fire element person can be very charismatic, right? Which is a an attractive quality. Like you're just like oh, there's something about that person. I just want to hang around with them. They're just so 
there's just something about them. This is what other people would say, right? Um, or they might be very good at selling something, right? And so you're just like, oh, I just got sucked into their sale because they're so good at that, right? Um, or, you know, and everyone's kind of selling something in a way, right? So you, they might just, they might, they might make YouTube videos and you're just like, oh, I just find them really, um, like, I just want to keep listening to them. I just really want to what else, what else have you got? Like, keep talking. Um, and I want to be around them or, you know, whatever, wherever they are, right? In the workplace or something like that. But in a exaggerated sense, it can be like a, become seductive, right? So we just like, I was seduced slowly, by him. I slowly started to be seducted by him. Like, he started to seduce me. I don't know. Like, I love that TikTok where the guy's like, I was, I don't know. I was just, I become seducted by him. Um, so, like, it can be... Um, it's, I guess in a mental illness. Now, I don't want to say that everyone in an exaggerated sense who's a fire element would have a mental illness, but in an even more exaggerated sense, you can see this in mental illness where people get, like, it's very common in bipolar disorder for people to get, um, like, extremely sexual and not be able to control that nature. And that's, in a way, like, in a Chinese medicine way, we would think of that as an excessive amount of fire. So I just want to be clear, I'm not saying people have a mental illness if they have too much fire as a, um, a one-off thing, let's say. But it's these, the, the correlations between these things are not, not that far away and it's probably easier to kind of explain like that. Especially if you've ever known someone with bipolar who has highs and lows. So when you're in that high, like that's that an excess of joy is like someone who's very easily excitable. Um, sometimes people in, with these kind of bipolar disorders will just spend too much money because it's like the reason of the, the the reasoning is taken away and so they're like they're seducted by the idea of um oh i just want to you know pamper myself three words for you treat yourself treat yourself 2011 and it, it, like feel good about myself and either buy a lot of stuff and they don't realize oh that, that actually costs money and i need to where do i get that money from or if i spend that money on this i won't have money for my rent or my my kids or whatever um versus someone who's um you know knows they can receive pleasure from something but they also have that reasoning there right so we all have aspects of these things going on in our lives whether you're a fire element person or not we all have the ability to feel joy is a fire element thing and so i hope that no matter what element you are in you can still feel joy and you do feel joyous from time to time right but to feel that sense that heightened sense of joy all the time like this elated or super excited or something like that would be um too much right so a fire element person can also instead of being um, tender they can become sentimental so like holding on to the past um and like you know that reminiscent in living in the past world that kind of thing um and instead of being sort of like that op that open and open to future possibilities maybe that's closed a little bit and they're sort of more sentimental and hold like uh, you know maybe even unable to let go of things in the past or something like that would be an extreme part of it in a healthy state a person is um, devoted a fire person is devoted so they might really like they they can become attached to a cause um through devotion right they just like yeah i'm gonna serve you i'm gonna you know do what's necessary to do that but in an unhealthy state they might not see the objectivity in something and keep on like they might stay in a relationship where something bad is happening to them because of that devotion and just adoring someone and not being able to see all the flaws or the difficulties in the relationship um you know i'm not saying every fire element type people are the abused abuse people in a domestic violence situation or domestic abuse but this can be the reason why people stay in relationships that are not great for them it might not be a sexual relationship it could be like you know you stay in a job where you you just adore your boss or you adore someone in your workplace you don't want to leave but they're not treating you very well and you just think you know you don't have the ability to kind of sever that relationship because um you know you're just stuck in that state of adoring and loving and you're you're um, you know, can't see objectively. That could be part of it. Um, and instead of being alert, um, a person who's got too much fire could become anxious, right? So there's a difference between being, um, you've probably heard this a lot because of the COVID stuff, right? I've heard this stuff in lots of different um, countries say, saying things like, you know, be aware, um, but not anxious or be aware, but not, um, you know, not worried, that kind of thing. So there's a, there's a fine line between awareness and worrying, right? So awareness is like, um, when I go to bed at night, I'll check the front door, make sure I locked it. 
And anxious is like, oh, did I lock it? I'm not really sure. What if I didn't lock it? What if I didn't lock it properly? Um, what if those locks aren't working properly? What if someone just smashes through them and just breaks into my house? Like, that's a, you know, a difference between those two things. So if you are worried and worried and worried and thinking and thinking and ru ruminating on that stuff, you know, in a way that's making you worried or, so, you know, this is also relates to our heart. Some people get heart palpitations from being worried and anxious. <coughs> Mm. Um, right <clears throat> so that's the heart that, so that's the fire element in an exaggerated way and we've talked about it in its normal state so now we're going to talk about it when what if a person's a fire element person but there's not enough fire <laughs> come on baby light my fire there's nothing there to light um so instead of being lively, they could be startled. Now, this is a really common thing that we see in Chinese medicine um, where a person um, goes like this <gasps> when someone sneaks up behind them, right? <laughs> um, it, it happens to me sometimes because I get in my own little world and I'm just thinking about something. It's not because I'm a fire or oh, hair in my face. Um, it happens to me sometimes because I'm not in, I, I'm not a fire element type person, but um, I get in my own little world and I'm, you know, thinking about my own stuff and then someone comes in and you went aware right and then you're just like oh, like startled like that and so the, that that's a, a disconnection of your like your physical body with your mind now it can happen when you drift off into outer space right like <laughs> you're in your own world you, you know but it, are you in your own world all the time or are you aware so a fire element person would have a lot more awareness so this would be an uncommon thing for them to do that like are you easily you easily startle it's because there's an in inadequate amount of fire to kind of do what they should be to provide that alertness that they should have um so in a healthy sense a fire element person is meant to be communicative and this is a key part of their psyche of their personality they can communicate well and they need to do that in order to um, be strong and um, survive and be healthy and thrive in their element so um, to be mute or not being say not saying something or not being able to feel that they can is a big deal to a fire element person. So they should, um, it, like they might be someone that says, like, I used to have a really strong voice and now I can't, I just feel like I've got nothing to say anymore or I just feel like I don't know. You know, they just break down in their communication in a relationship. So if, you, if you're in a relationship with a fire element person and something has happened that's um, put the fire out, or put the fire down, let's say, um, they might you might notice that they've gone from being very communicative to not as communicative in their in their personality right um instead of being charismatic um and this is uh, again this can sometimes be this bipolar thing i said that before they could be seductive but they could also be really flirtatious right so there's a difference there between seductive and flirtatious more like um you know that person's just like wanting set like they're attracting sexual energy or they're they might wear clothing that's very revealing on purpose um because they feel like they want to seduce and um, they want to flirt with you know people and it, it might not be what they would naturally actually do they're just looking for a way to um have that love like express that love that, that is really important to a fire element person right and so they might become flirtatious in that way also fire element people in a deficiency can be almost like a lightheaded air, like an airheady kind of person so um you know just uh giggly and um you know giddy on their feet kind of thing and not not enough substance there it's like if the fire needs something to burn it needs some substance to burn and when it does have that it's it's very charismatic and strong and that person's like attractive but they're also they're not just like an airhead or there's you know it's like they're attracted to who they are not just attracted to like oh there's oh hello <laughs> there's nothing here to you like that's all you've got um and so that can be a sign that like that lack of substance like literally a lack a deficiency like a lack of substance there to kind of provide any more substance to their person so they're like attract you you're attracted to them but then you're like oh there's nothing else here <laughs> like you're just a like that's where we get that phrase of airhead now i'm just making this up i'm not i'm just <clears throat> i'm just making that saying up it's not like that's written in a textbook or anything that you become an airhead um but that's that's kind of the idea like yeah so a deficient fire element person um could become um really um se sensitive person as well so fire element people are very open to their feelings right they feel all the feels and they get these 
strong emotional connections between things but instead of being sort of tender and like soft and open to that stuff they could become very sensitive to it and and maybe too vulnerable to things and with loss to that objectivity of being able to say well hey this person said this about me is that really true is that something that I need to take to heart right so you know it's some elemental types find it really hard to they shut their emotions off right so a, a fire element person has their emotions on so they have their vulnerability and their, their let's say your emotional receptor of what people are saying and what that like that you feel so they feel all the feels <laughs> they feel everything and sometimes that can just be overwhelming and be too much and if there's no other things to temper temperament that um, to temper that or to balance that out then that could become someone that just is very sensitive so if you're in a relationship with someone who's a fire element person or maybe you found yourself in this situation and so in a healthy state you might be really good at loving and really good at listening to other people and you're like wow I really feel that difficult circumstance I really feel how you know when you went through something so bad in your life or you know someone tells you a story and you just feel so sad about it um, whereas other elemental people other elemental types might be thinking objectively more about it and they can't actually feel what it would feel like right and a fire element person in that vulnerable state is able to that's what makes you able to connect with people because you can feel what it was like and you can you're kind of articulating that back at the other person in your responses that you have and your eye contact and your ability to connect with that person whereas you know other types might be sort of off on thinking <laughs> thinking about something else or like why didn't you just do blah 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 that would have solved it right so it's a kind of you know all these qualities are good qualities they just need everyone has every quality has detriments if it's left with no other temperament of it right so I don't want you to listen to the people listen to these videos and think oh no it's all bad qualities it's not bad qualities um, they're good qualities and it's about knowing who you are like well, when you do know who you are you can really utilize those strengths nice and you can realize that hey you might feel vulnerable and feel um, uh, like that you might feel that that's been a detriment to you because maybe you haven't been able to temper that but there's other types of people who wish they could feel like that. They wish they could connect with people as easily and that really takes them a lot of time to kind of connect with them. So the super sensitive person might be, um, you know, to take things so personally without any objectivity, right? So someone says something, you just take it to heart. Again, the heart, right? You take it to heart straight away and you, and or you're losing sleep over something like that or you're crying a lot over something and getting very emotional and letting that then disturb your, your health and your, your day, the rest of your life or like that because um, of your super sensitivity that could be one of the problems here but this type of person is prone in this deficiency to become like they kind of lose that objectivity to be able to go hey I do feel these things but what does that really mean is this something that I should take should be taken to heart is this something that I should be um, acting upon is it should be should, should it be something I like lose sleep over or you know cause it to mean that I don't have a good appetite or something like that other health problems might happen Particularly for a fire element person, they can feel a little bit lost if there's not enough fire there to kind of, you know, do what they need to do. Instead of being a person who's devoted, um, they might, in a deficient state, become really infatuated. So a person that's devoted is like, yeah, I'm with you. Like, let's say you're in a relationship and it's a healthy relationship, you're devoted to that other person. You're like, yeah, I'm with you no matter what. Like, you know, that's what you say when you say marriage vows, let's say. Um, but a person who's in a deficient state might just become easily attached and infatuated to someone who doesn't reciprocate that, let's say. Or maybe, again, the abusive relationship could be there or they could become easily become a victim of something. It doesn't have to be in their um, love life. It could be in their workplace or something like that and they become infatuated in, with someone or something, right? Um, and then finally, they can become panicky as a person. Instead of being alert and aware, they can become uh, like, um, you know, panicky, like similar to the anxiousness, but just a person that panics all the time, like at the drop of the hat. Oh, oh, but what if this? So they, you know, they go to the worst case scenario, no matter, <laughs> no matter what happens. I think it's got to do with the fire element person being very um, in touch with their emotions. Like they are a vulnerable person in that way. So if you think about fire, right, it is very strong. It can cause destruction, it can cause um, a change, right? But it's also very delicate. Um, it doesn't take much for a fire to go out if it doesn't have anything to burn on, right? So if just the fire by itself, that soft flame, 
Um, you know, it's at the mercy of lots of things. It's at the mercy of the wind and the other elements. It's at the mercy of um, having enough wood to burn and that kind of thing. So that's something to think about with fire. Like, often when you see fire, you think, oh, yes, fire, like, ooh, fire. But fire is like that soft and, yeah, beautiful and vulnerable and um, warm and attractive, right? And so that's, that's a fire person in their true nature. So fire people can have sometimes have difficulty with boundaries because they like affection, they tend to be easily relatable to people. So they might be the kind of person who rocks up at your house um, at an odd time because they felt like it. <laughs> they feel that they might not realize that um, touching might not be appropriate. Like even people who are younger and discovering who they are, um, who is a fire element person might, um, you know, just be a naturally affectionate person and not realize that that could be conveying something else that they weren't mean, meaning to convey, let's say, and they might have st struggle with those kinds of boundaries. Um, or, uh, you know, like when you're in a relationship, like you're firstly meeting someone right, for the first time, and if you had someone who wasn't very affectionate and wasn't a very touchy person versus a touchy person, then, um, you know, they, they could the, the fire amount person could struggle with, oh, why, why wouldn't you be like this? Why would, because they just naturally are like that. Um, and so you're so space, right? And separation can be a big thing for people with, who are a fire element person. They can feel really depressed or sad or um, disconnected because they need they need that connection with other people. So um, if you are facing that right now, I'm making this video in 2020, and there's lots of people around the world like facing it. You know, there's lots of hardships because of um, COVID, right? Like being separated from people, whether it be because of your living situation or just that you can't go and visit people and there's that lack of social connection would be a big thing for um, fire element people. Um, they can have difficulty with stimulation, like they might need stimulation to sort of sort of feel, um, you know, they like things that make them feel emotional things, right? Like so movies and songs and, um, you know, the arts and connecting with those kinds of things um, to, to be able to feel that stuff. So there was if there was a lack of that, um, you know that and, and that stimulation to kind of get that goal. These types of people can have trouble with sleep. So your sleep is related to your shen, your mind, um, resting at night. So if it can't rest, then you can't fall asleep, right? You and you you it doesn't shut off. So you might have trouble falling asleep, or if you're dreaming a lot, that's a sign that your mind is so active, right? And some people do have. They would say, "Oh, I have good sleep." But they're not really fully rested because their mind is just active with lots and lots of dreams. So um, this kind of stimulation and also people that are um, in a state of feeling a lot of feelings and a lot of emotional stuff that might be kind of processing at night. So that's something to kind of consider for fire element people like their sleep could be a problem because of that. Um, so the typical problems that fire element people have is like can be anxiety and agitation. Um, they could get into a frenzy. <laughs> they could get into a like, ah! <laughs> um, they they typically like pleasure and they like to feel things and they like to be pampered and they like to um, experience these pleasurable things, right? Clothes. Treat yourself. Fragrances. Treat yourself. Massages. Treat yourself. Mimosas. Treat yourself. Fine leather goods. Treat yourself. And so to uh, an overabundance of that could be part of that, like um, in, in, a, in a disharmony. Um, so perceptions and sensations, things like being able to um, work out what that really means and what they really are could be, can be difficult for fire people sometimes too. Um, so they can suffer kind of an, an, a nervous system over, overwhelm from that. Like their nervous system can get overwhelmed and they can become exhausted um, because they are, like these things fuel you. If you were a fire element person, you would feel good being around other people. You would feel like that's fueling me. So it's not like, oh, you've, you've been out all night socializing with people. It's kind of like more a lack of that stuff that would make them feel like exhausted. But in an, in an exaggerated state, a person that can't control that and doesn't make any time for rest kind of would be like, yeah, I'm just really social all the time and doing, doing, you know, doing things and um, yes, expending a lot of energy with relationships and talking to people and things like that um fire type of people can have like more get heaty problems in chinese medicine so like rushing up of heat which is your own yang really but like um you know rashes and um, heart palpitations and these kinds of things can happen um as an as a um consequence of like 
fire not being controlled properly. So it's like a rushing of the fire, right? So you know when you put fuel on a fire and it just goes woof, and it woofs up, right? That's kind of what happens in this sense of like rushing upwards where you get like heart palpitations and um, sometimes like things, you know, rashes and like stuff like that can happen in, on people. Um, too much sweating, that kind of stuff. Um, and some fire element people, people tend to be prone to abusing um, substance abuse, right? Because they tend to seek pleasure and they seek um, uh, that sensory stimulation. Right? They enjoy that stuff. And so could have trouble where they find something and then they are, are unable to control that. So just as, just as a quick summary, if you're a fire element person, you probably like intimacy. Um, you love having relationships. Um, you like excitement. Um, you like sensations and um, doing things that make you feel different emotions and things like that. Um, you like desire and charisma, right? And so, you know, pleasure and, um, you know, are attracted to beautiful things. You're attracted to, like, you like the idea of attractiveness and, and beauty and um, this kind of stuff. Um, and you also um, wouldn't shy away from drama, right? And excitement and, like, the... <laughs> You know, the social things that come along with um, that, like the drama of people's social problems, you probably would enjoy that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, you tend to be the life of the party, like a hot, vibrant, exuberant kind of person in uh, in a healthy state. So I hope that helps you understand the fire element a little bit more. Um, if you are interested in finding out what element you are, you can click the link below to these um, free tests that I found online. It's not one of my tests or anything. It's just one that you can do. Um, it is based on the book that I'm using to um, talk about this and so this there's a book here called um, Between Heaven and Earth a guide to Chinese medicine so some people have asked um, about that on the channel so I'll just pop that there there's lots of different versions the other books might not look like, exactly like this one but this is by Harriet Benefield and Ephraim Corngold and this book is used to inform the theory behind five element acupuncture and just the idea of all these things that I've been talking about. And it talks about the different elements, but then it talks about what to do um, in a deeper understanding and also how acupuncture and herbs and um, different kinds of foods and different things like that would, um, would be used um, in these ways. So I hope you're enjoying this series and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click subscribe. Um, really appreciate um, your subscription. <laughs> really appreciate you supporting the channel and I look forward to um, talking to you again on the next video soon.